In this video, I want to show you one of my most fun social media tactical tips. As you can see over here, I call it my secret sauce. Let's jump right into it. First of all, let's always remember that we need to make it easy for your followers to click on all of your links. Very important. I'm going to call that a conversion rate. It's very important when followers see stuff that you're advertising that they convert. They click on it, they move into it, they give you data and so on, or become a follower on social media. Now, what I want you to do going forward is take the www out of most of your links. Anything that goes to LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or any other social media that's an outbound link that might be in your, uh, your signature, let's say. Let's start re removing the www that you see in red here. Instead, let's include http colon forward slash forward slash. And you're, you're thinking to yourself, wow, that's so nerdy. Why the heck? Well, everything here, this little tactical tip, will absolutely change your conversion rate. Let me show you why. First of all, if I were in Facebook to message a lot of people and say, hey, everybody, join www.twitter.com, power106la, follow us, one of our clients. Unfortunately, the www does not let every social network know. It, some networks are smarter than others, and it won't let them know to turn that into a hyperlink. But if you use my technique and turn it into HTTP, notice how you can roll over this, and it turns into a link. So it's super easy to go follow Power 106 Los Angeles, the radio station, on Twitter. You can go visit their Twitter page and go, wow. I am interested. So we want to start removing www, start including HTTP, and that will create a hyperlink for every URL. Once again, secret sauce. It seems like it's very simple, but this little tiny trick, when you write your messaging out separately, write it this way so that when you distribute it to people, put it in your, uh, in your signature line or you're writing messaging and cross-pollinating between networks. If you write it this way and you lead to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or any other type of entity that is your social media thing, not only are you saving a few characters by deleting the WW and including the HTTP, but it will became, become a rollable, hyperlink and it will increase your conversion rate. Okay, in this video, I want to walk you through key takeaway number one. These are the big, big picture things and I want you to write this down. Great messaging is the key to making social media more effective for your business. Once again, I'm going to repeat it. Great messaging. There's a lot of people out there that say it's technology. There's all kinds of tics, tips and tricks that are, no, it's messaging. You come back to being coming 100% about the client, the customer, how are they going to spend money, how are they going to sign up for my newsletter. Great messaging is that key. When you resonate and spend more time on, the, on your messaging, you're going to resonate with the customer. So let's walk you through how to do that. First of all, why should I'm going to, I'm going to show you what great messaging can get people to do, and then I'm going to show you exactly how we make great messaging. A lot of people ask us, why should I get people to comment on like and like my posts? I just want to sell to them. Well, let me show you why. First of all, look at this complex little system we have going here. First of all, great messaging gets things started. Let's pretend like this is you or your brand, perhaps. And your brand, it starts with a great message that could be on Facebook, let's say. On Facebook, puts out a great message, and that message could be, hey, we have new pictures on our latest event on our website. Like this post below, vote on your favorite one, and then go visit our website. Notice how I say comment below or like this post. Very important. A lot of people ask, well, why is that important? Let me show you. Let's pretend like you only have four followers. If your fans comment below and then visit your website, here's what happens. Great messaging has both a call to action and a link. So the call to action says, please comment below or like this. The fans comment or like your post, which what that does is it unlocks all of their friends. Their friends see that this person, their friend Billy, commented on your brand, and then they visited your site to go buy your product. Well, if their friends see that, then their friends will either visit your site to go buy your product or go visit your brand and like you on social media, whether it's Facebook or Twitter. So sometimes you're going to see us do things that, that are perhaps great questions. Retweet this if you like it. Retweet this if you're coming to Vegas, perhaps for Palms Casino. And the goal is that our message gets spread to their friends, because if their friends see the engagement and start following your brand or visit your website, you have succeeded. So this is the viral activity at its best. Add value to your followers, get them to interact with your message, it will then share it with their friends. Once again, commenting or liking unlocks these second degree people and slowly your brand begins to grow. Let me walk you through and show you how we do this. 
These are some Facebook steps for success. Really, it's just messaging steps for success. First of all, I want you to begin crafting each message separately in a separate document before you copy and paste it over. A lot of people think, oh, social media is fly by the seat of our pants. We need to be right now, right here, because people are listening and watching. You'd be surprised. We actually are able to craft everything out ahead of time, literally one day to two weeks ahead of time, and it's so well thought through because of a timeline, a schedule, a marketing calendar, that we are on time and, and everything is awesome, and we actually get more engagement than those that fly by the seat of their pants. So this is the secret sauce. This is the trick I want you to try. This is gonna reduce errors, it's gonna increase your voice and do all kinds of really, really cool stuff. Here's a formula you can use for most of your posts. And you might consider writing this down. This is for Facebook, because it says image. You always start by uploading an image, and I'll show you in some of our videos, plus a question. Everything starts with a question, because we want to we want to ask the consumer. We want to let them know that we just want to talk about them. Dear consumer, what's your favorite, red or brown? Please vote on our website. Consumer, what's your favorite music? Is it this or this? Vote on this. Comment below with your request. All kinds of stuff. Questions are huge in social media, because it's talking about the consumer. Call to action tells them what to do. Comment below, like this post if, you've, if it's your birthday today, whatever it is, get them to do something to that social media piece of content, plus a link. That link goes back to your website or it cross-pollinates them on another network. Let me walk you through this, this document. It looks a little intimidating at first to some. This is Monday's posts. You can see the word Monday over here. Here's the date of the month because I'm a nerd. I like to sort things, so I love to put the date of the month and I get to sort. Here's the time of the day, and it, the, a lot of people ask, well, what time should I tweet? You really have to ask your followers. Who are your customers? Who do you want to sell to? When are they online? We like to start anywhere from local time, wherever our consumers are at, anywhere between 8 to 8 is a good time. But you need to find out when that actually is. When are your consumers on? If they are on, what network are they on? And when are they actually, are they on mobile? Or are they on the web? Is it during 5 to 5 and so on? So where are we gonna send the messaging? We have Twitter here, the top eight, and Facebook. You'll see in future videos, I want you to just post on Facebook once. We've written out all of our tweets very carefully. Other team members have approved them and looked them over, so there's no spelling errors. We took our favorite tweet, turned it into a Facebook post. It can be a little bit longer. It can be up to 300 characters and so on. Now, here's our link, because remember a link is a really big part of our, of our formula here. And lastly, it calculates how many characters, because we only have 140 characters to work with, we need to make sure that we are not going over that. So the link plus the character count is calculated right here, kind of nifty. And then you can see it's, if it's scheduled or not. And I want you guys to adapt this. I know this looks like, a well, it's a best practice, or AKA the guy's a nerd, but this really does work. And next, you can see if our team has approved it. So this is the messaging engagement calendar of success, if you will, it works. I encourage you to try it. You can use Google Docs, you can use Microsoft Excel, whatever it takes. Try and write out your messaging ahead of time. I hope it works for you. I'm Josh Oaks. A lot of brands ask us, how and where should we use hashtags to drive traffic back to our site or our conversations? I'm gonna walk you through a formula that you should remind yourself of every time when you're tempted to use hashtags. First of all, here's a quick jump start to bring everybody up to speed. Hashtags are used to group conversations together that reference an event, a topic, or a region, like a small city. We're gonna come back to these three different things that I want you to remind yourself of before you start using a hashtag. Here's an example of, of a hashtag. I just bumped into one of the speakers at the conference. I'm off to get some lunch. Hashtag CES 2012. All of the consumer electronics show in Las Vegas attendees, if they're on Twitter and they want to be a part of the conversation so that you can, you can actually search and see what is everyone saying at CES, they will include this token at the end so that when you click on the token, it's actually auto underlined in Twitter. And you can see all of the hashtags that are being all of the conversations and they're now grouped together so that you can see what's happening at con the Consumer Electronics Show. That is a great example of it being an event and a region. It's in Las Vegas just for a week, and it's an event, and it's also a topic. So it's a great example. Another one, another way to find out if your hashtag should be used, start at search.twitter.com to see what's popular. Go look and start searching. Which hashtag are people using? Is it overused? If it's used every three seconds, probably too much. You're not actually going to become a part of the conversation. You're just using something that happens to be used tremendous, 
amount of time. So use search.twitter.com and find something that's used approximately every hour or less, maybe every couple days or something. Next, let's move into examples of good hashtags. Here's hashtag Hermosa Beach. This is a small city here in Los Angeles. It's about 20,000 residents, and true locals are searching for hashtag Hermosa Beach because they want to know what's happening locally. This helps local, city locals track local news. Another one, hashtag CES 2012. It's an event with thousands of grouped conversations that happens locally in a certain region, which is great. Hashtag KKTNY, Kim and Courtney take New York. And normally I would say TV shows shouldn't have their own hashtag because it's too much going on. But it's kind of fun because A, it's really, really short, and B, there's a lot of passion behind it. It is an event that happens typically at one time during the week, unless you DVR it, and it's also a topic, which is awesome. So a lot of people are using hash hashtag KKTNY or other hashtags for TV shows. Next, SB46, the official Super Bowl 46 hashtag. There's a lot of hashtags around the Super Bowl. This was the one that they actually displayed and set and broadcasted to everyone on their website. Next, TXSEN, which is the Texas Senator political hashtag followed by the press in Texas. It's a great example. The press goes, I want to group all these conversations together. We're going to follow this stuff. So anytime one of these senators that's in the race is running and they want to put out a new press release, they'll use that hashtag and then the press will watch it. Next, ML tips. It lets users share and track social media tips. This is what we use at a lot of our large events, our boot camps. As we give a tip, we ask people, please tag it that way. That way, those that are following go, what is the ML and tips? It's something I should read and look at. Next, here's some examples of when not to use a hashtag. You can use them whenever you want, but I, I want to I walk you through exactly what we see as, as something that it might not be helpful to you. First of all, don't use them if you have an at sign under the same name. A good example of this would be, at media leaders versus hashtag media leaders. Why would you use hashtag media leaders when you could just tag the at sign because you're talking about us, then we will retweet it and hashtag it and so on. So use at media leaders if you have the same type of name. Next, don't make it too long. Try for less than eight characters if you can. The reason to use a hashtag is because it should be a small token. Like SB46, you can add it at the end without taking too much of this precious real estate that we have that we call Twitter. Next, play devil's advocate for a negative response. What could go wrong? Always ask yourself, if I'm putting my brand in here and I'm a large brand and perhaps some people perceive me wrong, what could go wrong? How would people start using this in a negative way? Let's re just review really quickly. Remember to use hashtags in the case of an event, a topic, or a region. Those are good three areas that you should start thinking about. And next and last, Try to keep hashtags to less than eight characters and use search.twitter.com to check their popularity before you start using them. I'm especially excited about this video, how to get recommendations and request them on LinkedIn. Recommendations and testimonials and endorsements from other people's words from their mouth are the most powerful thing in all of marketing. Rather than me saying nice stuff about myself, I would rather someone else say it about me. And it's even better when there's a link to them and it has their title, the company they're from, and their full name. And it has quotes around it because it shows that they have said something nice. Let me show you really quickly how to get those recommendations. We, in, in the academy, we have a very detailed video on how to do this, how I do this for my company, and how I recommend on, on stage in, in our boot camps to do it for yourself. Here's a really quick overview. First of all, you're going to go to your page, roll over profile, and click on recommendations. Very easy. You're then going to see the next page will say it'll show all of your the companies that you currently work for in the past, and you can accept or request a recommendation. Let me show you the email that I've created that's standard that I would be honored if you try, test, use for your own. Apply this. Make some changes. Make it work for you. Here's what I do. After a speech or after a client has said something really nice to me, a compliment, wow, you did a great job on that, the first thing I do is say, wow, would you mind putting that on my LinkedIn page? And I'll actually ask a client there immediately. And they'll usually say, sure, you did a wonderful job. I can say that exact same thing on your LinkedIn profile. Because I'm in the speaking business, I usually use that as my in, if you will. So what I'll write is I'll follow up with an email after someone has complimented me about a speech. I'll say, thank you for attending the social media boot camp. Now normally, typically it puts their name in there automatically, so I don't put that in there. Thank you for attending. If you found the event helpful, would you feel comfortable writing one or two sentences that highlight a tip? 
Feel free to include any doubts that you had before the event, a very important part of a testimonial, and maybe any changes that you will make to your Twitter, Facebook tactics going forward. The key to a great testimonial or recommendation is Tell us, tell other people about the doubts that they had. At first, I thought the product would uh, be like this, and I felt as though this would happen. Then tell them about a change that you made, but I decided to take the leap and jump on board. And then if they get the opportunity to actually try your product or your service, the third part of a great testimonial is share with us the outcome. Was there a whole lot of success? How did it work? Why would you do it again? And what do you recommend for other people? So this is a great way to do it. Another fun thing I do is I say thanks in advance for anything light, bright, and polite that you can provide on my page. And what that does is it's, it's, just, it's a nice, gentle thank you. I appreciate what you're about to do for me. And anything that you do in a casual, positive manner that's authentic, I appreciate. Once they've given you a recommendation and you get this back in the next couple days, you'll notice that you can re see received recommendations. You can view it. And, you can, and this is what a recommendation from one of my friends, Rohit. You can actually go down here and it show this recommendation on your profile and accept it. And that will then appear on your profile, which is a, you can be really proud of because they have had said something very nice about you. Their name appears, their title, and a link to their profile, which is all the elements of a great testimonial. So it's very, very powerful. There's even a way for you to click onto the next page. And once you accept the recommendation, give them a recommendation back. A lot of brands primarily sell to their customers. I'm going to show you a formula and eight questions that you can ask yourself and answer that will actually help you avoid selling but still engaging with your customers, which is super important. Many brands ask, what should I say all day long? Uh, if I'm not selling, what should I write? If you answer these questions and start with this slide, you can't go wrong. These are the questions you really should start with. Here's a formula and question number one. Well, let's start with this. How to get inside the conversation happening in your customer's head. That's more important than selling on social media. And let me show you how you can get inside that conversation. I want you to answer this question with four or five different answers, little bullets below it. What does your customer love? It could be a baseball team, a football team. It could be Fridays at 5 p.m. because they're getting off work. What does your customer hate? List out four to five things. It could be paying their rent. It could be certain amount types of stress. What do they fear? What does your customer really fear? Get inside their head and start answering these questions in full sentences. What annoys them? What is, who is their worst enemy? Who is their best friend? What is a positive force or belief that your customer holds? Bullet this out. What is a negative force or belief that they hold? And who is their hero? If you're able to answer all of these in four to five little bullets, all of a sudden it will start writing your messaging for you and you don't actually have to sell your product or service. Nobody wants to listen to someone that's selling and so if you start talking in this manner, you will have some of the most engaging messaging known to man. This really is a secret. Now it's not easy. Don't think that this is a get rich quick scheme. This really does take almost an hour of really hard work writing out your stuff. But as soon as you answer these questions on paper and fully answer them, don't just think about them, fully answer these questions with separate little sentences under each one, it will begin to write messaging that is incredibly engaging. This is the secret sauce behind great messaging. And the last question that you should answer is, what social networks are my customers on? And you should really sit there and write down. Sometimes you have to actually call a couple of your best customers so that you can see what networks. It could be Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, they may think they're on Twitter, but they have actually haven't tweeted in the last year. So really ask them, get to know them, answer these questions, and you will have the start of great messaging that's engaging.